Okay, so let's figure out how to charge my AC on the Fiero. It's been a couple years since I've done my AC conversion. Um, it's actually been several years, maybe four or five years since I've done the conversion. I'll put the date here. And of course, it's had a leak, but it's been several, several years. So that's pretty good for an old system like this where I didn't go through and change every single seal like I should have. I changed a few of the seals, but not every single one. So there's a tiny bit of a link leak, um, but it's microscopic. It's lasted, like I said, years like this, just fine. If this goes empty again in like a month or so, I know I'll have a much bigger problem and then I'll have to go through and check all my seals. So if you're able to get your Freon at the Walmart or wherever, uh, or ordering it online, however you can get it, this is how you do it. So for about $20 or so, you can get your AC up and running again, assuming you have no leaks. This video is just about charging. If you have other maintenance issues or repair issues or conversion issues, that's a completely separate topic. In fact, if you want to see how I did my conversion, I'll go ahead and post a link for it here and put it in the description as well. This video is just about charging if you already have the 134 conversion done. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get your caps off. There is your low pressure one on the accumulator and there's the high pressure one down there. So uh, just unscrew those caps. They should be hand tight. Step one, I have the gauge hooked up to my lines. The line that is going to the accumulator, that is your low pressure line. It also, if you have the cap, has a big L on it. <laughs> So that way you know that's the low pressure. And the high pressure has H on it. Down here is where it hooks into. Both of these are just snapped on right now. Neither one is actually um, connected yet. I have both of these valves closed, yes. So first thing, I'm just gotta close this valve now. Or not, what? It shouldn't, why is it doing that? Is my gauge screwed up? Okay, there, now it's closed. Huh, yeah, it's leaking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now it's closed. So that means I bled the air out of that one. Let's see if this one does that. You need to close it so that Schrader valve opens. Okay, that should be open. Same thing, bleed the air out. Okay, there we go, air's bled on both of those. Apparently my gauge is wearing out. I need to get a new one. Okay, so bled the air out of both of those. Okay, we're gonna start the car. Turn the AC on. Okay, car started. Clutch released. AC on, full. So the good news is I have a little bit of pressure. If that was empty, I'd be concerned but it has a slow leak. So after many years, that's not too bad. So now I gotta start charging it a little bit. All right, so if you don't have a manifold gauge, you can use one of these to charge as well. These are nice because it actually has kind of a guideline of what it says to uh, fill it to. So down here, you set your temperature at 75 degrees. So it says, I should fill the low pressure side between now like 27 and 46 is what this says. Right now I'm at 20. I only have 20 pounds in it right now. So if I start filling this, it should turn on pretty quickly. Okay, attach my can. Turn it on. So this is reverse threaded, I believe. Oh, oh, what's, oh, it's loose. He's fitting, you only need to hand tight him. There we go. All right, so that's good, that worked. So need to bleed this, same thing, because there's air in this hose. Don't point it at your face. I would expect him to see gas come out of that, but apparently not. So if I turn this knob, my pressure should start rising. All right, here we go. There it goes. There you go, you can see the little side glass. That's 
it's working. Has not kicked on yet. I have not heard it kick on back there. There, I just heard it click. There it goes. So it's just going to draw it in while it's running. Might need more than one can, we'll see. It still hasn't even got to the point where it's on all the time yet. Come on, baby. I don't know why, usually shaking the can makes me feel better slash helps. Yeah, you can hear it definitely staying on longer now. All right, I guess I need more. I wouldn't think any more than two cans would. If you put in more than two cans, I would think something else is wrong. Okay. Bleed it. Ah. I saw visible stuff this time. There he goes. Come on, baby. Ooh, now it's starting to stay on longer. Now we're getting more pressure on the high side, too. Now it's almost staying on all the time. So you want it to stay on all the time. That's like the minimum and sometimes and like a tiny bit more after that that's that's how much you fill it for Ooh, it's staying on now 20 30 actually oh it's hovering at 30 it's staying at 30 okay the number that it stabilizes at is the number that you want to pay attention to on your gauge, not as you're filling it. Because it's going to jump between like 55 and you're going to freak out. So once it's constantly on like this, that's where you want to set your charge. So according to this gauge, 35 is right in the middle. I'm like at 30. So I can put a little bit more in it maybe. But it seems to be running fine. I've got my hand on the vent over here. It's nice and cool. It's right above, it's like at 26. There's a close up of the gauge. So technically that's barely enough to keep it on. There it goes. Just looking in the sight glass, I can see fluid in there. Now we're at 30. I'm telling you, wiggle in this, gets it in there. There it goes, that's much better. Okay, now I'm gonna turn that off. Closer to, it's closer to 30 now. It feels nice and cool to me. I can put a thermometer in there and get the exact temperature seems to be stabilized it's running it's nice and cool i just checked the inside temperature it's like 42 degrees it's blowing out and that should be good enough so i can't give you an exact number uh because this is not the factory system so there's no exact numbers but this process will work you basically want to charge it until slowly until you hear your compressor constantly staying on monitor that Add a little bit more after it's all the way running. Check your uh, temperature and everything's working. You do not want to overcharge the system. You can overcharge this and I think bad things happen. I don't know what will happen, um, but it doesn't make it run cooler. I know that, so don't overcharge it. Make sure you bleed the air out of your system. Even try to bleed this if you can. 
And that's about it. Get one of these gauges if you don't have one because they're super handy. Especially if you're gonna be keeping onto your car forever. They're very valuable. Because it would tell me if I had a blockage if this number was way out of whack on the high pressure side. So closed, closed. Undo and undo. And release, woo, that's high pressure. So when I say release, I unscrew this first and then pop it off. Yeah, that was 175 pounds almost. So that's why that had a little more pressure. Wow, okay, we're good. And then when you're done, make sure you put your caps back on. These are actually, will help if you have a leak in your Schrader valve down here, it will actually help seal it. So I would put these on snugly. Once again, by hand. And just put these on. Make them snug. That's what they're for. Okay. Bam. All right, so that's how that works. Now, obviously, several things can happen at this point. You can still have a leak and it will leak out. You can continue to charge these. These cans used to be like five bucks a piece. Now I've noticed they're 10. And in some states for a crazy reason, they have um, said you can't use these anymore, which there's no federal law against that. So I don't know. I think you could still get these shipped to you in certain states. But yeah, 134 is never gonna be illegal, but there's just restrictions in certain states. I don't know why, or counties or something. But here, I can buy this stuff, but now it's $10 a can. So there you go, for $20, I have got my uh, AC system up and running again on my Fiero. This process is exactly the same on any um, GM car of this, any GM, all my GM cars, this process is exactly the same. I don't know about every car in general, but high pressure, low pressure, blah, blah, blah. It's all pretty much the same. Been a week later and my AC is running nice and cold. Here it is on a moderately warm day. It's not super hot, but the AC is ice cold. I wish the AC on my Corvette worked this good. It's just fantastic. So good luck and enjoy your cold AC.